So a question here for you now, particularly for coming from the, the left, we look at, you know, all the various left parties, even just look at the Irish, even the radical left in Ireland recently has some of the parties have, have had their splits. How did how did Adams, how did the IRA leadership keep those splits to like to basically in, insignificant splits? How did they manage to maintain a unified action when they really rolled back on some key you know, components of what would have been unthinkable in the 70s became debatable or whatever, but it looks like proper strategic choices in the 90s without splits. Yeah, I mean, there were various factors behind that, that Adams, he learned a lesson from the experience of, of Cahill Goulding, who had been the leader of the IRA in the 1960s. And, and one of the main lessons he seems to have drawn from Goulding was that in order to avoid the minimize the the danger of a split uh, you have to move very cautiously step by step instead of raising a number of issues that would be taboo at once you raise one issue step by step and you tell people no no of course we're not going to do that we're just going to address this issue so you know for example the question of abstention from Leinster House the parliament in the south when Sinn Féin adopted that policy Adams and his allies insist no of course there's no question of calling an IRA ceasefire, we're going to carry on the armed struggle with, with all the force at our disposal. And and the same thing happened at a later stage when the IRA called a ceasefire in the mid-90s. They said, no, of course, we're not going to uh, recognise British rule in the north. We're not going to participate in a power-sharing government. We're not going to recognise the police. Uh, and we're certainly not going to decommission our weapons. So there were mixed messages being being put across to different constituencies things being said in public, things being said in private. You know, there was there was an argument from sceptics about the peace process for many years that the fact that Jerry Adams and his allies were saying one thing to IRA members behind closed doors and, and another thing to the Irish government or the British government or the US government, that indicated they were taking the governments for a ride. You know, in hindsight, it seems more like they were taking the IRA members for a ride by, by telling them that there wouldn't ever be decommissioning or there wouldn't ever be accepting a, a partitionist peace settlement. 